if you have an AJAX application, now I'm going to show you the um, uh, the one cycle test. Uh, this is a test we've constructed. Now this one uses the Lotus Notes, the Lotus Live iNotes application. So I'm going to load that script up and play that back. And you can watch the script go by. It's got three steps. It's going to, this is a Lotus iNotes, so this is an email system. And of course as an email system, it's interacting with a server. So the, uh, the AJAX nature of this application is explicit. Um, and uh, what we do is we log in, and then what we're going to do in this particular test is send ourselves a message and then delete the message so that we return the test object to the initial state. And now we've logged in uh, with our account, and we're waiting for please sign in. We found that, and now we're syncing on the word inbox. You can see the syncs going by, sync on element property, listing new message bottom. Um, and we get that, and then we now we go to the create a message. We're in uh, create.evs. Interestingly, of course, evalid has the ability to do a call script, so we've set this up as, as three different acts in this play, and we're in the create message, and now we're waiting uh, here. Well, we're going to wait five seconds. I don't know why we did that, so we drop some text in. I guess that's for didactic purposes so you can see things going by. If you do this too quickly, uh, it's kind of hard to follow what happens. So we're syncing again and then waiting. And then we're waiting. And then we sit, do that. And now we're going to go ahead and um, delete the message. And now we're going to delete the message we just sent ourselves. So you see the message showing on the on the input folder, we're going to go find it by its handle, its object identifiers, and uh, then we're going to delete it, um, and uh, then we'll sign out. So this takes about, where are we now? We're at the 111 second thing, by the way. This, this particular column that I have right down here, right there to the right, that particular column on your screen is the number of milliseconds as it goes by. All right, and uh, we got all the way to the end and logged out. The interesting thing about this particular script is that we can actually, this particular script is what we call desktop safe. There's no command in there which requires the use of the desktop. So I won't do it, but if I wanted to, I could open up the eValid uh, dashboard, minimize the eValid browser, and single tip single step through that script just like this. And it would play back perfectly normally. So let me, I got a warning there, let me bring this back up. I hope I can do it. This one. So um, it's a desktop safe script and that means that for testing AJAX in a load circumstance we can do the following. We can run multiple copies of eValid simultaneously, each one operating that particular playback script. and uh, so our approach to doing server loading in the presence of an AJAX application is simply to replicate the eValid browser. And uh, Whaley, if you will take the screen, we've set up an example of this where we do the Lotus iNotes, Lotus Live iNotes in a five wide. Now this is the load test scenario editor. And so we've setting, we're setting eValid up to run five simultaneous eValid browsers and we'll look at the status report. So you can go ahead and go on that. And then as soon as this thing starts up, we're going to have the page tiled so you can see all five of these running. Now we ran this about a half an hour ago, and Whaley told me it took about, what, 65 seconds? A little bit over that. A little bit over that. And now when we played it back in the, in the singleton on this machine, it took 111 seconds. The reason for that time variation is, let's face it, the amount of load on the server at that particular time. So our test is independent of the load. And now we're going to go ahead and impose, now you see five, five eValid windows, one, two, three, four, five, and they're all logging in and they're all operating independently of each other. And that's because the eValid browser is a separate process on the Windows box. So you see all of these are running and now they're all a little bit out of synchronization with each other because, of course, the server that's interacting separately with these five playback processes is behaving, it's playing pretty well, but it still is not perfectly in synchronization. 
Uh, there are mechanisms for synchronizing playback between screens. Uh, but that requires accessing in the script, uh, it requires that the script access some synchronization window. And we've done those examples too. Um, in any case, what's important about this is that we're getting a good simultaneous playback, and actually all these things will then turn themselves off, and at the end of playback, now they're all logging out, and at the end of playback, Willie, if you bring up the scenario monitor, we can see what the min, max, and average times were for each of these playbacks. So these playbacks, oh, this now it was a little bit heavier. It took 122 seconds minimum and 132 seconds maximum to do those five simultaneous playbacks. That decrease in time, we would argue, is the result of the load imposed by running five of these simultaneously. I don't, we've done some checks to make sure uh, that we're not saturating our own DSL, and in fact our DSL is something like 5 megabits, and it's uh, not being saturated at all. This thing uses small percentages of the DSL. So there are some limits. The natural question you have is how many eval browsers can you get on a one driver? And the answer is 100 minimum. We've seen some applications where you get 200 and 300, and we're working uh, steadily to increase that limit. To get above 100, does re above, actually above about 25 simultaneous browsers does require some modifications to the Windows operating system. Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope you can see my screen. Go. Oh. So I have created beforehand a 100 wide load test, which is going to play the 100 browser user instances wide. So. I've loaded the file, and you can see here, so it has all 100 lines inside there. Okay, and then we, um, in, from within a different view of the script file, then from the test scenario instance, because we've enhanced it with save records, and that's going to create another data file, which contains time segments or playback results. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, one click and launch all 100 browser instances. Right. They're all going to be ramping up slowly here, and basically here's a view of the actual test.evs script file, and it's going to go to a website, and it's going to then go to, and right now you know it's sitting at stopped, and it's going to wait to synchronize on the text running before it goes and downloads a 100 kilobyte HTML file. Now, moving forward, here's how 100 browsers oh, sitting side by now. side would look. Okay, yeah, now here's what they're all look running. like. Yeah. So then they're all running. And we, we show you that page because, oh, there they all are, all 100 of them. Um, basically, I don't believe you can do 100 browsers on one machine, and you can indeed. OK, that's good. So is it, uh, is it moving? Is the screen moving? Yeah, it shows some animation, doesn't it? Yeah, OK. All right, so screen goes back to me then. Thank you, Willie, for running that one. <laughs> 